senior lecturer of the Department of Forestry and Environment Science, and Dr. Chamila Patirana, who is a senior lecturer of the Department of Forestry and Environment Science. The session is about MPhil and uh, student session. So I would like to hand over this session to Dr. Tila Chandra Tilaka to continue the proceedings of this session. Thank you. Okay, uh, thank you very much and uh, welcome you all for the uh, MPhil, MSc actually, and uh, BSc student uh, research uh, discussion session. Actually, this kind of, uh, uh, not a technical uh, science topic session, but uh, kind of an uh, informal uh, uh, session. Uh, if I uh, mention the history of the forestry education in University of Srija, the Napura, it, is, uh, it was established uh, after introducing a forestry MSc course in 1983, with having an objectives to produce or, or develop knowledge and skills a uh, full resource person to manage forest and other natural resources, as well as uh, to prevent environmental pollution in the country. So having those objectives, so we are running our uh, bachelor courses as well as master courses and uh, P field and PhD course, uh, courses. Anyhow, uh, uh, most of our MPhil students and PhD students uh, contributed uh, to this, this year's symposium uh, by presenting the valuable scientific uh, findings to the other technical sessions. So for these sessions, we are having our MSc students, MPhil students, and BSc students. So, uh, and uh, I, I should say something about arranging this informal session. Actually, uh, you know that uh, this time we have to restrict uh, our symposium to the online platforms. So uh, that's lost. Uh, the opportunities for our students to for socializing. I mean, uh, during the past symposium, our students were able to uh, have a couple of discussion or nice discussion with the researchers as well as among the uh, peers. So they exchange their research interest and research findings or research views in the fields of forestry and environmental sciences. So today we are uh, going to share the, the same thing in a, this digital platform. So uh, without taking much time, um, we can continue our discussion by looking at our students' uh, uh, video. First, uh, shall we move to the Mr. Nilanth Vishwanath video? Uh, he's actually a long-term friend to the Department of Forestry and Environmental Sciences, uh, and um, he's uh, uh, continuing his MSc's, MSc uh, a study with us and uh, now he's almost completed his uh, MSc research anyhow he's a great nature lover and uh, and again he's an entrepreneur on the field of uh, ecotourism so he's uh, sharing his experiences and uh, research finding with us today and after the uh, video maybe we can um, have a uh, chat on his uh, experience and research findings okay let's move to the Nilanthas video Hello, I'm Nilan Vishwanath, uh, representing 2017 MSc Batch Forestry and Environmental Management. I'm very happy to uh, be here and uh, share my experience, introduce myself into this great, uh, great audience in this uh, 25th Forestry and Environmental Science Symposium. I introduce myself as an environmental educator and uh, entrepreneur in the field of uh, ecotourism, uh, managing my own uh, a safari camping, eco-friendly safari camping business in Yala and Vilpatu National Parks. I can remember, I can remember in 1998, Professor Hiram Amarsekar was uh, initiating Young Biologists Association uh, along with uh, Professor Chandrani Vijayaratna and uh, she was the president of uh, IOB, Institute of Biology. YBA provided great opportunities uh, for us to learn about uh, nature, uh, and increase the knowledge, uh, at the same time develop our skills. It was a great opportunity for us during that time. Uh, then I became, uh, then I became a committee member to Young Biologists Association, and uh, then in 2008 I became the president of uh, Young Biologists Association. 
uh, now I'm working as a uh, advisor to the uh, association. Uh, so today uh, I'm going to talk about a uh, little bit about ecotourism. Uh, ecotourism is one of the uh, subjects that has been misunderstood uh, largely in Sri Lanka. It's not uh, just taking people into the nature and earning money. Uh, there are three other uh, main components of ecotourism. One is education, uh, environment education. It should provide uh, opportunities for environment education to uh, increase the knowledge, challenge attitudes of people, or, uh, or develop uh, skills. That's one of the major components of uh, ecotourism. Uh, second component is uh, community. Local community should be benefited uh, uh, from the ecotourism activities. That's very important. Uh, if they get uh, kind of benefit from the nature or ecotourism, uh, they feel like they have to protect the nature, they have to protect the immediate environment. So that's very important when it comes to ecotourism. I can remember uh, in 2010, uh, when the government reopens Vilpatu National Park uh, after the civil war, uh, there were a lot of conservation issues like poaching, uh, at the same time illegal uh, timber fillings, kind of a uh, lot of conservation issues were there. Uh, but now uh, most of them they have better opportunities than uh, killing animals. They have their own chiefs, they have uh, better income. Uh, by uh, doing safaris, at the same time some people uh, they have other uh, opportunities like providing food uh, to the people, selling things to the people, kind of other incomes, uh, providing accommodation. Uh, that's a very good example that uh, when the local communities uh, get benefits uh, from the ecotourism, they feel they are part of it. They start uh, taking actions to protect that one. The third uh, component of uh, ecotourism is uh, conservation. Conservation of nature, conservation of uh, biodiversity, conservation of wildlife. That's very important. But uh, one cannot understand how ecotourism uh, support uh, environmental conservation. I have one uh, good example from Galgamo. Uh, Galgamo, you know, uh, it belongs to uh, Kurunagala district uh, in between Kurunagala and Anuradhapura main road. This was in 2012. Uh, I went to visit uh, Kalgamu to see one uh, Tuskal. Uh, he was very popular as uh, Kalgamu Dalagutu or the cross tusk of uh, blind, cross tusk of uh, Galgamu. One of my friend, his name was uh, RNJ Bandar. He was a uh, journalist uh, and he was residing in that area. So I went to meet uh, Bandar, I talked to him. So he knew that area very well and uh, he said that uh, I come, uh, we can go and uh, um, uh, see the elephants. So he arranged everything. Along with uh, Bandar, I went to one of the China cultivations in that area and we went there to see um, Dalaputua, this Prostaska, and we were waiting uh, to see him. We, we thought that he might appear there. Uh, during that time, we had a chance to talk with that uh, owner of that uh, China cultivation. And we got to know that uh, they were, they were uh, once we talked with them, they, they became uh, very friendly with us. And, and we got to know that uh, he is using uh, two gun traps to protect his uh, chain cultivation. And he removed those gun traps uh, since he knew that we are visiting that area to see elephants. That day I realized the importance of ecotourism, importance of visiting that uh, area, uh, how it can affect for the conservation. Uh, the same day, same day the, the Tusca also came to the China cultivation. If, so what I realized is if I did not go there that day, 
that animal might get a severe injury or on his leg. So that's that's a common situation. Carpets they are using to protect their uh, cultivations. Even after that, several times this tusker, uh, we saw him uh, with lot of injuries on yeah. his legs. Even today, many people believe that we should not uh, share the locations of these tuskers, these rare tuskers, because it can be dangerous to them, it can be harmful to them uh, by sharing these locations. Yes. But my opinion was totally different. So what I believe is like we have to visit these areas regularly and check uh, whether these animals exist or to take photographs to watch them. Uh, indirectly, it will affect uh, actually not in the record, directly it will affect for their conservation. Like poachers won't get information from Facebook or social media. I strongly believe that one because they knew where the elephants. Poachers knew that where the elephants are, where the animals are, those things. But we did not know where are they and like that. So what I wanted to do is like collect the information about uh, tuskers through uh, social media. So I. Uh, started a platform for that one. I started a small uh, group uh, called Tusker Sightings. It was a, a, a Facebook group uh, called Tusker Sightings. And uh, right now, uh, now we have uh, around uh, more than 5,000 uh, followers in that group. And so through this uh, uh, platform, we could uh, gather the information. Uh, about tuskers which is necessary for their conservation. So Several times we got to know that uh, these some, some tuskers were injured. Several times we uh, got that information through this group and uh, we could talk to the relevant authorities and inform them that uh, this tusker is injured in this area. Uh, we have to treat them. Like that we could push them into action. Uh, with these activities, Galgama has become a little bit popular among photographers to photograph elephants and uh, tuskers especially. Uh, so what I want to do is kind of create a small ecotourism model in this area. Bandara, Bandara was a very conservation oriented person and uh, he realized the value of these animals. And at the same time, he experienced the uh, bad side of uh, human-elephant conflicts. So, like many uh, people uh, were killed in that area. At the same time, property damages. And at the same time, uh, some animals were injured, some animals were killed. So there were many conflicts in that area. But uh, when he has that pressure from the community, Still, he managed to work for the elephants. So, if you are traveling through Galgamoa or passing Galgamoa, please visit these areas. Please uh, go and visit these villages and listen to their stories and try to understand what are the issues in that area and try to observe some animals, uh, try to observe some tuskers, although they are difficult to see. Keep some time to watch these animals. So let's make a uh, model ecotourism village in Galgamoa. At the same time, uh, we can make a voice to have a protected area in Galgamoa. So it's very important for the conservation of these animals. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Lanth, for sharing your valuable uh, things. I mean, especially the uh, footage are uh, very inspiring. So I think this is a good opportunity for our BEC students uh, uh, to know more about uh, the biodiversity and its conservation from a uh, person like uh, Mr. Nilantha. And Dr. Priyan also there, and uh, Professor Hiran Hiransa is also with us. Thank you very much, sir, uh, about your comments. Can you hear me, sir? Uh, yes, we can hear you, Nilan, sir. Uh, now, what is your proposal on this? Uh, you said that there is an issue on the, the villagers, and uh, now I think the uh, recent trend is to have uh, living with elephants, no? 
like living with oil yes, and uh, but there are in the, at the moment also they, these people are having lot of uh, protesting in tisamaharam area so you said that we had to visit these people and what can you see how to conserve those animals and while safeguard in those villages also so this uh, environmental issues uh, uh, you know if you take uh, most of the environmental issues they have different uh, kind of uh, angles uh, so human elephant conflict is actually a, a very uh, very difficult to uh, solve these problems um, the thing is like the, the, sir uh, as you said that the, the earlier i mean in uh, maybe in 2 uh, 300 years back people uh, they lived with these animals uh, so that's that's kind of sustainable uh, because of their sustainable lifestyle but now uh, people when they grow crops they because they are mainly depending on the uh, you know the because of the economic problems now uh, what they want to do is like they want to get uh, kind of uh, big harvest from small land so the, the issue is with the land actually the other problem is like humans and uh, uh, animals we are fighting for one resource that is willu actually uh, most of the uh, paddy fields today they were uh, you know uh, 100 200 years back those areas were uh, willu areas so grasslands actually even the paddy fields paddy is also a grass so to these two animals humans and uh, elephants they are fighting for one resource that is uh, grasses actually uh, so what we can do is as you said that uh, to live with animals to to uh, get used to uh, be with them actually uh, we have to protect our uh, crops at the same time we have to leave kind of uh, resources for them as well Uh, because of this land use problems in sri lanka this uh, human elephant conflict is uh, raising up actually uh, so that's what i wanted to say like we have to protect and uh, another problem is like uh, during uh, past uh, uh, era um, protecting their crops was also a part of uh, agriculture but now most of the people they don't want to do that one uh, because of this uh, uh, the human lifestyle has been changed with the time so they don't have time to uh, much time to uh, be with their agriculture so if you are growing something they have to be with the uh, paddy fields and they have to protect uh, those things as well so it happens in dry zone uh, in some areas but uh, places like galgamoa these areas uh, they have a lot of uh, human elephant conflict but uh, you have no kind of uh, solution for that one in one uh, i mean even if we talk uh, one or two hours we can't get uh, as a quick solution for that one right uh, thank you nilan sir for you uh, explaining the situation uh, behind these stories uh, any questions from our bsc students especially uh, yes i can yeah uh, uh, i am kishore Uh, fourth year student uh, from the department of forestry and environmental science uh, uh, mr nilanda can i ask a question uh, that uh, yeah. i uh, you, we know that you are involved in many ecotourism researches in sri lanka so what is your thought on that the implication of these research areas in sri lanka and uh, do you think the outcomes are be uh, disseminated in uh, the community of your ecotourism researches uh actually i haven't done much research on uh, ecotourism but uh, i'm an entrepreneur and i have kind of a little bit of experience about uh, ecotourism uh, as i explained in my uh, uh, video uh, the ecotourism is kind of thing in sri lanka that uh, largely misunderstood this concept because uh, as i said that uh, there are three major uh, components of ecotourism uh, one is education uh, environment education the second component is community uh most of the time most of the people they uh, ignore this part actually uh the third component is conservation that's also neglected by most of the uh, uh people who are uh, running ecotourism uh, companies so but uh, if they can understand this concept properly 
it's not just taking money from the uh, taking people into the uh, nature and earning money so they have uh, these two responsibilities uh, for the people who are dealing with ecotourism they most of them they say that they are running a ecotourism business uh, but they are not giving anything back to the nature or they are not giving anything back to the community so this two part is uh, very important so actually uh, i think we have to work on uh, uh, ecotourism so uh, then we can uh, do many things back to the nature at the same time for the villages i think uh, we have to do, uh, work on ecotourism a lot in sri lanka yes uh, thank you nilanta i think uh... Uh, he sure can follow the uh, the comments or the suggestions made by Nilanta for your research studies since you are in the same field, no? He sure. Yes, yes. Sir. Okay, thank then uh, with that, uh, thank you, Nilanta, sharing your views with us today. Next, I would like to move to uh, Miss Dilini Samarajeeva. Uh, she is uh, also a MSc student. Uh, uh, joined with us in two thousand seventeen. So first, let's uh, see what she want to say uh, about our symposium and forestry education in the department. So let's move to the video from Dilini. My name is Dilini Samarajeeva and I'm a graduate from the Open University of Sri Lanka under the scheme of natural science. And I completed my MBA at the Cardiff Metropolitan University UK with the standard of a merit. I'm nearing at the end of my MSc degree in Forestry and Environment Management at the University of Sri Jayawardhana, Sri Lanka. I started my career as a young naturalist with a fresh and foremost experience gained from the Young Biologist Association of Sri Lanka. I joined uh, the YPA in 2004 and held senior position on the committee of the association. In the period of 2007-2008, I volunteered for the association as the vice president and in the year 2009 appointed as the secretary of the committee. In 2009, the Young Biologist Association offered me the honorary membership for being a young leader representing the association in the South Asian region and networks for the contribution on the administration, well-being and goodwill of the association in Sri Lanka since the year 2004 as an active member. My volunteer experience with YPA strengthened my professional skills in the field of conservation biology and environment education. I got to know Professor Hiran Amar Sekara, who is the patron of the Young Biologists Association of Sri Lanka since my A-level. He explained a few of the many incredible activities of YPA, thus I found it as the perfect place for me to spend my leisure time effectively and meaningfully. I have developed and conducted environmental education programs for schools and nature societies that have a focus on biodiversity conservation, environment impacts, green barriers, sustainable lifestyle and going green from a personal, global and business perspective for technical schools and university students. I was fortunate enough to meet great people, get involved in many worthwhile projects and travel around Asia, communicate and educate people about global environment impacts and sustainable development goals as a result of YBA volunteer programs. Currently, I am working as a business development executive at the Technology Transfer Office, known as the University Business Linkage Cell of Sri Jayawardhanapur University. I am a trained technology broker by the World Intellectual Property Organization in the fields of intellectual property management, technology commercialization, and patent analysis. Yeah, thank you, uh, Adilini, for providing this video. And she's uh, here with us, Adilini. Hello, sir. So, Hello, sir. Uh, yes, we can hear you, Adilini. And Dr. Varane yeah. is also there. Maybe it's Varane. Varane, we can't hear you. Yeah, Adilini, uh, because actually I'm interested to see that you have followed the uh, but at the moment you are uh, like working in a different platform so uh, how would you actually uh, do you like yeah any uh, insights on like 
how do you actually apply the knowledge and skills that you got from the forestry program to, uh, to what you are doing currently? Like you said, you are doing intellectual property rights. You are working on those. Yeah. Yes. Yes. I'm really happy to uh, um, you know, exchange, share my knowledge about that, ma'am. Uh, first of all, I would uh, say this important thing to uh, get to idea about other students as well. I am a person who didn't uh, get the opportunity uh, to go to the con uh, co conventional university as Rijavardhanapura. But as a result uh, of uh, being a young uh, biologist of YBA, uh, I, I got an opportunity to understand what is the uh, meaning uh, of higher education. So I, I, I applied uh, for the uh, Open University of Sri Lanka, then I gained my first degree. And then uh, with some experience in the uh, a private sector, uh, I thought uh, that I should go for highest education by applying for a, a conventional University of Sri Lanka. So I, I, I decided to apply to the MSc program in Japura. Uh, again, while I'm doing uh, my studies in MSc, Yes, uh, I, I gained a lot of things uh, because we studied uh, technology subjects, uh, we studied about environment impacts, uh, we studied about uh, the trends of uh, uh, green technologies which is applied for the, uh, uh, to uh, sort of um, some uh, uh, impacts uh, which is existing in the global level. Uh, so I thought and I have seen uh, technology is one of the uh, uh, important fact to uh, overcome a lot of difficulties in all uh, in Sri Lanka in, uh, in international level as well. Uh, while I'm studying in this MSc, uh, I could uh, show my capacities in presentation, in negotiation, and uh, cooperation uh, with students and other lectures. I think uh, from that, uh, it, it uh, helped me as a uh, forum, as a stage uh, uh, to go uh, forward in my career. I think uh, I applied uh, for the uh, vacancy which was uh, existed in the university at that time. Uh, so I participated for the interview and got the best mark at the uh, interview. Then I selected to the university business linkage at the uh, University uh, of Sri Javardhanapura. And again, I should say, I trained by the World Intellectual Property uh, Organization of Geneva, Switzerland, uh, in the scheme of intellectual property management, uh, technology transfer, and patent analysis. Now I'm currently working as a young uh, technology broker uh, because there are very few people in Sri Lanka at that uh, particular field. And I'm really honored to have that uh, uh, that position in University of Sijavardhanapura. And now it's been one year, more than one year. This, this is my second year. And uh, with the knowledge and the skills and uh, the experience I gained from the MSc was really helpful for me to uh, achieve these uh, career goals and academic goals as well. Yes. Okay. Uh, thank you, Bini. I think it's uh, very interesting to see that like uh, when you get uh, knowledge from a master's program or like uh, any program that uh, it's, uh, the skills are the things that matter as well. It's not just the subject knowledge. So you can apply it for different fields and also you can do something uh, with what you are doing with um, our uh, environmental sciences or forestry areas as well, right? So uh, yeah. Yeah. thank you very much for sharing your experience. Um, uh, yes, uh, has anything to yes, from uh, the yeah. Okay, I think uh, Dr. Sampath Wahala uh, is the, the, the first president to YBA and uh, is joining with us today. So, uh, Wahala, sir, you can add something if you want. Oh, okay. Um, um, uh, and, uh, and, uh, I would like to uh, say a few words if I have time, sir. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
quickly um, yeah. actually uh, since you have mentioned the yba sir um YBA always had an opportunity to work with the Jayawardenepura Forestry Department. As uh, fresh school leavers, uh, we were able to see the world with full of uh, career opportunities by working through the bridge built by Hiran sir. Uh, actually, I would like to take this opportunity to uh, uh, say a uh, say few uh, word about uh, our Hiran sir. Um, actually, uh, or else I, I won't get the, this opportunity ever again. Uh, we all know that um, uh, what are the trends of young generation nowadays. Some are very tragic, but I must say YBA is a place where youth put in a safe track and assured their future with meaningful goals. I would like to introduce Hiran sir as a giant lighthouse who showed the pathway to find the destination for numerous lost uh, ships in the infinite ocean. He's a more than a mentor, more than a teacher, and more than a role model for us. Thank you, sir, for giving this light to our lives. Uh, wish you a long and best life. And I would like to thank all respected lecturers and all the academic and non-academic staff members for helping uh, and uh, helping hand to achieve our higher studies goals. And also my thank goes to the Department of Forestry for arranging such a session like this to awake our memories and thoughts. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, and, and Dr. Tilak, sir, as well, for giving this opportunity. Okay, thank you, Dilini. I think uh, she's, a, uh, she, uh, she's kind of role model for our BSc students. So you can uh, grab the, uh, the, the, the insights from Dilini's uh, views. So it is... Uh, uh, Dr. Varuni and Dr. Chamila, shall we move to the uh, next part of our session today? So our present MSc students are going to uh, share their research interest with us today. So uh, the first presenter is uh, Ms. Navitri. So uh, first uh, look at her video and uh, she's explaining what is, uh, what, is uh, the, what, what is she going to do with the, uh, her MSc research. So let's then. Uh, Hello, everyone. Yeah. I'm Navitri Navanjuna. I have completed my BSc honors in town and country planning from University of Maridua. Currently, I'm working as a town planning urban development authority. When I talk about my job role in my workstation, I'm engaged in preparation of development plans for UDA declared areas and engagement in projects work too. Why I have selected this master program um, as my further studies, the main one reason is that I'm interested in this field. Apart from that, certain modules learned under this master program is influenced for my career development. That means in preparation of development plans, we have to concern about this environment. And also under the development plan, we have to prepare sub plans like disaster risk reduction plan, and solid waste management plan, and landscape management plan, wetland conservation plan, likewise those. So in preparation of those plans, we should have a sound knowledge about each and every sector. Therefore, through this master program, I was able to gain a sound knowledge of each and every sector from uh, modules that we learn up to now. And also it helps for me to contribute my knowledge towards that preparation of those plans. Okay, next uh, I will do a small presentation about what I have selected for my research in this year. My research is about effects of urban park characteristic on park cool island intensity. Due to the urbanization, world is transforming day by day. Therefore, most of the people live in rural areas move into urban areas due to infrastructure development in urban areas. According to United Nations, they mentioned that at present, about 50% of world population live in urban areas and they predict that 
it will be increased up to 65% of population by 2030. Therefore, with that situation, most of the lands are converted from green to brown and subdivided into smaller lots due to unavailability of lands in urban areas. Then, with the high migration, the land use changes occur. As a result of that, high use of urban energy system and carbon dioxide emissions and uh, urban spore, increase of natural disasters and urban heat island occurs. Most of the scholars have pointed out that there is a need of reducing urban heat island, which is considered to be one of the major environmental problems. Because urban heat island increase cooling energy consumption, raising pollution levels, and which affects for the habitability of cities. Therefore, how to mitigate urban heat island has become a major research focus today. It is well known to us that urban vegetation can decrease the temperature in city through shading and evaporative cooling. Urban parks have been considered as an important part of urban vegetation, which are cooler than their surrounding built up areas and can form a park cool island. Therefore, establishment of par urban parks can be an effective measure to improve the urban thermal environment and mitigate urban heat island effect. There are two methods that can be used to quantify the cooling effect of green space and parks areas with the aim of urban heat island mitigation. Those two are green space cooling intensity and park cooling intensity. Green cooling intensity means temperature difference between green space and average temperature of the whole study area. Park cooling intensity can be determined as temperature difference between the inside park area and its outside within a 500 meter buffer area. Then why I have selected this research uh, is that as a town planner, I need to understand how to design urban park to maximize their park cool island intensity and mitigate urban heat island effects. And also, I hope to provide a guiding urban landscape design and urban management to improve the urban, urban thermal environment. In the past two decades, there were a lot of studies focusing on the influences of urban park characteristic on park cool island intensity. These studies have found that there is a significant positive correlation between park cool island intensity and urban park size. Larger parks had a stronger park cool island effects than smaller parks. However, the cooling effect of urban parks may also related to other characteristics of park, like uh, urban forest structures in park. Anyhow, there are rare studies on this relationship between park cool island intensity and the urban forest structures in park. In my research is focused on study on the physical characteristics of the park, such as geometry and size of the park cool island effect and identify parameters which could use as park cool island indicators of an urban park based on park composition, vegetation distribution and characteristic. This is a brief introduction about what I have selected as my research. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Navitri. Now I think uh, she is with us uh, here. Uh, we can discuss especially Dr. Varuni's uh, master. I mean, uh, she's uh, specialized on these green technology concepts. Maybe we can have a nice discussion. Yes, Navitri. Uh, I think uh, she's available here with us. Uh, is she here, Navitri? Oh seems ah it's not there 
Okay, so yeah, just uh, basically since the undergraduate students are here, I guess uh, the idea of that uh, research is uh, mostly like um, we are trying to look at what sort of parameters that uh, are, that we will have to look at when uh, designing urban parks, because we know at the moment there are many uh, new urban parks are being uh, introduced to uh, our city, especially Colombo, there's a, a new urban park which was opened very recently. So um, when we design this, how to look at the forest structure and what sort of uh, uh, species, so what sort of, especially what sort of physical parameters the geometry and everything, how they affect on the uh, cooling effect. So that's what uh, uh, we are trying to look at in there, basically uh, using some GIS based methods. Mm, so that's the idea. And if uh, any undergraduate student who is interested on in doing research on this, uh, I think there are special students here as well. Uh, you can always communicate with this uh, MSc students, some of them are very uh, experienced, like she's an urban planner in Urban Development Authority. So they can communicate with them and um, always get some uh, support and information as well. Okay, thank you, Dr. Varini. Um, uh, according to the schedule, our next uh, presenter is Ms. Hemalia uh, Marasingh. I think uh, she's not here with us. Hemalia, are you there? Okay, uh, then uh, let's move to uh, Ms. Kannangara, what she's going to do, uh, do with uh, her uh, MSc research. Uh, let's play her video on her research. Kannangara. Hello everyone, I am Gayami Kannangara, currently reading my master's at uh, University of Shijavadalapura. Now I'm going to discuss about the parameters for identifying river health. These are the topics I am going to focus about regarding the river health parameters. Firstly, uh, this map shows the distribution of rivers worldwide and the political boundaries. Uh, this was created by uh, US government in 1980s and uh, this scale is to one to five million. When it comes to Sri Lankan contest, we have 103 rivers with a total length of 4,500 kilometers. Um, also, these some rivers have 53 waterfalls. Um, these rivers all start from the central hills and distributed to coastal lines passing three main different climatic zones. So we have the enough river resources. So why should we concern about rivers? Even in the past civilization was based on rivers such as in the Valley Civilization, Nile Valley Civilization. And also rivers provide water, habitat, travel routes, livelihood, energy sources, and also it has the biodiversity of environment. Let's focus on the current situation of the rivers worldwide, especially due to the anthropogenic activities. Human activities has caused the world run to in a different way than its normal way. The global warming, it's caused to enhance the river temperature. Uh, it caused various uh, effects to the aquatic organisms. And also deforestation. When the rainy season, soil erosion runoff can be happen and it caused to decrease the water capacity. Uh, so, Others are industries, agricultural activities, and livestock farming um, activities. We use some to pesticides, chemicals, and many other substances uh, with the trace metals and some to, uh, some um, the harmful substances. And uh, they can contaminate with 
river water and also uh, when contaminated with the ongoing substances it caused eutrophication of river the rubbish and the fecal water dumping the un says that more than 80% of the world sewage finds its way into seas and river untreated the fuel spillages uh, in we have the, the type of experiences the based on the ocean the new diamond fuel leak and it is based on the ocean but uh, there are some um, incidents uh, uh, happened based on the river also the river has become a general place for the garbage dumping this leads to river pollution in large scale the type of river pollutions are garbage dumping releasing of untreated sewage releasing septic tanks and sewage as effluent canal draining which collect waste from the urban dwellings and also industrial discharges the direct identified polluting locations are called point sources and the others are non point sources due to the improper planning of the industrial establishment in our country um, industries are distributed everywhere the most of these are located in watersheds and some are close to the rivers as well so the mm -hmm. map shows the distribution of the industries in the country the categories of industries based on the number 47 national environmental act 1990 There are a number of parameters that help us to identify the river health. The parameter is the quantity such as the mean or variance that characterized statistical population and that can be estimated by calculation from sample data. It is an important to determine in order to decide the type of application on treatment required it place to place and season to season and changes can go unnoticed as the water may look smell and taste the same there are three major water quality parameters they are physical parameters chemical parameters and biological parameters physical parameters they are based on the consumer perceptions and behaviors. The first one is temperature. Uh, it is affect the rate of decomposition of some population in water and it affects the life growth in water and also the it it is a critical factor in controlling the growth and reproduction organisms and microorganisms in river water. The other one is color. Naturally, there is no color in river water, but some organic matters such as humic substances, metals uh, like iron and manganese, or highly polluted with the industrial waste, uh, the river water has color. The, um, we can't measure the color using uh, some uh, equipments. Uh, it's, it's good for less than 15 TZU. And the other one is odor, mainly presence of organic substances. There is an odor in river water. The natural water, there is no odor. Uh, when it comes to taste, water should be free taste um, due to the presence of organic matter and some substances uh, there there may be a uh, different taste in water um, the turbidity uh, effective disinfection required that turbidity is less than 5 ntu Ideally, median turbidity should be below 1 NTU. Uh, the suspended solid, it is an important parameter for domestic water supplies. And the maximum recommended TSS limit set is 25 mg per liter.
when it comes to chemical parameters of river the ph is one of the major um, parameter to identify the uh, river health the more uh, the, the the most of drinking water lies within the range 6.5 to uh, 8.5 the natural water can be of the lower ph as a result of uh, acid rains and higher ph in limestone areas um, the ph of solution is the negative common algorithm of the hydrogen ion actively ph when it comes to the conductivity it is the electrical conductivity is the ability of any medium water in these cases to carry it and electric currents um, the presence of dissolved solids such as calcium chloride and magnesium in water samples carry the electric currents through the water the dissolved oxygen adequate dissolved oxygen is necessary for good water quality the oxygen is necessary element to all form of life the natural steam purification process is required in adequate oxygen levels in order to provide for aerobic life forms uh, the dissolved oxygen level in the water dropped below to 5 mg per liter aquatic life is put under stress when it comes to nitrate uh, nitrate is a compound uh, that is formed naturally when it, nitrogen combines with oxygen or ozone. The drinking water with a level of nitrate at or below 10 mg per liter is considered safe for everyone. The orthophosphate. In high con concentration, orthophosphate in ingredient in fertilizer run off the agricultural landslides can cause rapid algae growth in surface water which can deplete sunlight and oxygen level and harm fish population. The chemical oxygen demand which is called a COD is a in indicative measures of the amount of oxygen that can be consumed by uh, creations in measured solution. This this is the COD testing method and the BOD is biological oxygen demand. These are the levels and the rest of these, uh, these are the quality of water according to the uh, BOD level. When it comes to the pesticide, in some special cases, tests are conducted to find the concentration of trace metals such as lead, chromium, and also arsenic. Beyond that, sometimes the fluoride and nitrate levels are also considered. Based on the WHO and SLS stands, these are the levels of the water quality parameters for drinking water. The parameter wise, there are different analysis and test method to identify the water quality. For some parameters, special equipments like multi-parameter analyzer, um, turbid meter um, can be used. Otherwise, uh, some titration methods are used for the uh, get the concentration of some elements. Generally, if there are living aquatic species like a fish in river, we can have a basic idea of the river health. Usually we use the bacteria to test the river water. If there are total coliform and uh, fecal coliform presence, the water is contaminated with the excretions. Also we test uh, specific pathogens and viruses in special conditions. The water quality index, WQI. It is uh, a simple method utilized as a part of uh, surveying the general water quality using a group of parameters which reduce a large amount of information to single number. It applies uh, universally uh, 
due to its in intelligible concept and easy to operate procedure. It is, has undergone significant development over the past several decades and also it is a single number which can be calculated easily and used for overall descriptions of the quality of the water bodies. The WQI provides a quick and simple methodology to identify the quality of water by only looking at the single aggregate values and the corresponding scales. The table shows the water quality status of the relative WQI index. Under the negative effects of poor river health, it may be destruction of uh, biodiversity. As an example of Sri Lankan contest, 28 species um, of fish are nationally threatened and also nine species are globally threatened. The eutrophication can happen and bioaccumulation can happen. That means that some in uh, some the trace metals enter to the um, food chains and lack of portable water and diseases. According to the WHO estimate, that about two billion people have no option but to drink water contaminated by excrement, exposing them to diseases such as cholera, hepatitis, like that. Infant mortality. According to the UN, diarrheal diseases linked to lack of the hygiene cause the death of about 1,000 children a day worldwide. River Water Quality Monitoring There are authorities and institutes in Sri Lanka where river water quality is continuously monitored. One of them is the Central Environmental Authority. Uh, the physical, chemical, microbiological, microbiological parameters of the surface water at a pre-selected sampling location were carried out during 2012 on a monthly basis. Uh, the, uh, as an example of Calan River, Borreska, Moorwaba and Ma Oya, they, uh, they were evaluated by uh, CWQI, that means Canadian Water Quality Index. The other institute is National Water Supply and Drainage Board. They monitored the water quality at water intakes from a river. These are done in real time. And finally, I want to say it, no water, no life, no blue, no green. According to the Sylvia Ellis, uh, she is an American marine biologist, explorer, author, and lecturer. And thank you for being with me. It's uh, kind of very, um uh, informative presentation. Uh, Kandangara, I think uh, you are there. So if there are any questions, maybe our students can uh, raise your comments or suggestions while, uh, you know, Dr. Chamila is uh, here today. So uh, she can give some insights uh, for this kind of research. Yes, uh, thank you, Dr. Tilak. Uh, Kandangara, you did a in detail presentation on the selection of water quality parameters and the water quality indexes. So uh, what I have to, I have uh, one question regarding your water quality index calculation. You said that the three uh, rivers, they did a sort of water quality index calculation using Canadian water quality index. So what is the suitability of that particular index to our country? Kanangara, are you there? She is there, Gayomi. Gayomi, can you hear me? She is not answering. Is she there? Uh, Hello. Yes, uh, ah, yes. yes Gayomi, can you can you hear us? Yes, madam, I can hear you. Did you hear the question? Yeah, yes, madam. I think uh, it is uh, one of the famous uh, index method. And uh, so in many, uh, some articles and uh, some uh, uh, research articles, uh, they used this water quality index uh, for the our uh, country uh, 
to the rivers. So that's why I said uh, it is uh, one of the uh, uh, one of the suitable method for the other uh, in Sri Lankan contest. So have they used any other indexes? This is uh, yes, madam. They... Some. Uh, two or three methods I referred uh, in some articles, but I can't uh, exactly, uh, I can't uh, uh, remember what is the name of these things. So no, that's OK. So since we are taking time, uh, the others, are there any comments regarding the presentation regarding this area? Madam, I have a question. Shall I ask? Yes, please. Uh, so uh, what are the factors considered when selecting water quality parameters for a particular water quality? Uh, what? Naomi? Uh, okay, sir. Um, I think uh, when we select uh, uh, any resources or water or anything, um, I think much more better to understand about the uh, environment and uh, the location, uh, about the uh, about the river or anything. So then I can we can uh, get an idea about the uh, parameter. So in um, in here, some uh, physiochemicals, that means physical and chemical parameters, we can uh, 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 we can test. So when considering the physical parameters, we need to uh, on site, uh, we, we need to get the on site uh, values. So then if you have a ability to get these uh, uh, equipments and other things, so then you can get the physical parameters also. So then you can uh, get the further um, test uh, using chemical parameters. OK, thank you. OK. Yeah, OK. Are there any other questions? If there are no questions, uh, shall we move on to the next presentation, next video? Yes, uh, Dr. Chamila. So our next presenter is uh, Mr. Madhushan, uh, Ms. Hasangani. Uh, yes, Ms. Hasangani. Uh, so are you there? Uh, we are not going to uh, present the video, but Hasangani, if you are there, we can. Uh... Hello, sir. Ah, yes. Uh, could you briefly explain what are you going to do with your MSc research? Uh, so I'm going uh, to conduct about uh, the reduction of oh, what happened? Uh, I'm going to conduct about uh, the effect of uh, urban green spaces on the uh, reduction of the storm flow runoff. Uh, in there, I, I studying about several uh, models, um, hydrological models, and uh, mainly I concern about the I3 hydro model. Uh, mm -hmm. For that, uh, I need to uh, have some uh, details on uh, interception and uh, rain uh, fall runoff. Uh, and uh, about the um, uh, the uh, urban sp uh, available urban green spaces uh, around the selected area, and for that uh, I uh, have to use uh, GIS uh, software uh, for my further uh, clarifications. So where are you going to select? I mean, uh, where's your uh, site for studying this uh, 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 kind of research? I'm going to select uh, my hometown goal. Uh, uh, so you're going to analyze the stormwater runoff in the goal city limit or city area? Yes, uh, city area. Perhaps uh, Dr. Varun is there. Maybe you can give your insight to this kind of research, uh, Dr. Varun. Yes, uh, Asangani, uh, since you just yes, mentioned uh, you're using I3 hydro model, right? Yes. Uh, so I have some experience with that model. Um, is it uh, still 
as i know it's not still developed for sri lanka right it's developed by uh, us department of agriculture service have you checked uh, whether we can apply it in sri lanka yes madam i uh, searched uh, but they are asking a reference city uh, by giving a reference city from usa uh, i think we can uh, join the data from sri lanka yes so reference city in the sense so you just mentioned uh, you are just using it for goal right Yes. Uh, you are selecting a reference city because if let's say you are you select a city in uh, UK, uh, US, and it will take all the data from that city because and even the hydrological and rainfall data. So I think uh, what you can do is uh, you if you have all these uh, related data, I'm sure like you have all the relevant data for all district. Um, uh, I think uh, you can. look at the model it has some basic calculations actually if you look uh, through the model calculations and you can uh, get those information by yourself and you can develop it uh, so that you can apply it to go right i don't think you can use it directly um, to sri lanka and even if you uh, you can use it like even if you want to use it uh, you have to send the information to them and they are taking some time to process it like it takes some time so that's what i kind of figured when you said i3 hydro model it's not uh, yet applied in sri lanka and that's the reason uh, and yes, madam uh, can we use uh, rational model in calculations yes you, that's what i said like you have to use any basic model rather than going into that look at the model calculations but it has it has everything uh, in the manual and it's published so you can basically yeah. get that information and develop your own model for this because it's a very good study which is not uh, i mean i think in sri lanka this runoff and uh, urban green space this sort of studies these are very popular in many uh, like different countries because they are doing it uh, runoff reduction is a very important aspect and in urban areas as well so uh, you can add this you can do a very good study i think uh, you need to look at the uh, model application and uh, add up to it uh, change amend it according okay thank you madam okay Bye. thank you dr varani for you, uh, your valuable suggestions maybe it will uh, help great uh, to uh, align the research needs uh, of uh, ms hasangani's work uh, for completing his master degree okay then thank you hasangani for joining with us the next uh, you, uh, shall we Yes, uh, may I invite uh, Mr. Madhushankar uh, so we can play his uh, video. Oh, next. Uh, oh, sorry. Uh, there is another student uh, to ask a question from uh, Hasangani. Uh, so can I ask a question? Uh, yes. Um, sir, um, Miss, are there any like specific or particular tree species which are grown in urban areas? which can uh, like which has identified to reduce runoff uh, still i'm studying about those i don't have a clear idea on those okay thank you okay if i add something yes uh, so we can uh, do some uh, precipitation uh, 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 studies i mean uh, so precipitation distribution studies then we can identify which are the suitable species for retaining the water especially the uh, interception so maybe asangani you need to uh, uh, do some um, uh, literature survey to find out this kind of uh, information okay thank you for asking that uh, kind of question Uh, let's play Madhusankar's video uh, about his uh, research uh, work, and then uh, have a discussion on it. Good afternoon, all of you. I'm Chanakar from Forestry and Environment Management, MSc Batch 2020. Hope you are having a good day. So uh, today I'm going to share some information. about my selected research topic with you guys so thank you for giving me this chance my topic is evaluating performances of different types of sawmills in state timber corporation because i am currently 
working with State Timber Corporation. In here, in Sri Lanka, timber demand per year is 1.6 million cubic meters. So, this demand is fulfilled by different sectors uh, like home gardens, imports, rubber wood, coconut wood and also timber from forest plantations. The maximum amount is fulfilled by the home garden level. But problem is, is this home garden level extractions are replanted again with trees? There is a question. But in the case of forest plantations, in Sri Lanka, forest department is managing the forest plantations and they are releasing the mature plantations to uh, state timber corporation to harvest. So, here you can see the forest plantations are harvested and replanted again. This is the thing should happen because uh, if we are not planting trees after the harvesting, the forest cover in Sri Lanka reducing day by day. So, this uh, replantation process is a must. In the case of topic selection, uh, the State Timber Corporation is the only state institute related with this timber trading. But uh, this uh, State Timber Corporation also faces some problems with uh, timber supply and also uh, decline production in uh, construction timber and uh, there is a significant problem I have identified the higher amount of conversion losses in the saw meaning. So I am going to do this research and uh, find out the points which we can adopt some measure, measures to reduce this conversion losses in saw meaning. When we considering about the methodology, uh, what should we have to design to do this research, I have identified some important points related with different machineries in the saw milling. Uh, first one is saw type. We are using different types of saws in uh, different size, different types of saw milling, saw mills and the different species wise also different species giving different uh, amount of conversion losses in saw milling and also that is related with the uh, quality of the log if the log is having defects likewise and the product which product we are producing what is the size of the product also very important in the uh, in this case and also uh, solving efficiency and quality with related to the uh, skills of the sawyer that also very important uh, when we are designing the methodology in this research there are three types of uh, source using in different kind of saw mills circular source frame source and band source and here I have mentioned uh, what are the machineries I am going to uh, use in these uh, comparisons and evaluations. Woodmeiser for LT40, Woodmeiser LT70, Pesarato sawmill, Limeade sawmill and Veyran sawmill. This is Woodmeiser uh, LT40 machine. This is a Limeade sawmill and this is a Pesarato sawmill. These three are established in Capetipola complex. Here you can see some circular saws. This circular saws having high thickness in the saw, so uh, conversion losses are very high when using these circular saws. Here you can see some frame saws. This frame source also uh, having high conversion losses, but 
lesser than using in using circular saws in here you can see a wood miser saw mill in the wood miser saw mills uh, using band saws in the sawing so uh, conversion losses are very low comparing with uh, above mentions mentioned so when we considering about the saw mills uh, in state timber corporation there are many saw mills located in different areas uh, like ampar bus kaldemull talal dal malsiripura atgal kappetipola boraland here i have selected the kappetipola and boraland saw milling centers to do my research in here i have included some uh, data extracted from uh, my saw mills the when we considering about eucalyptus grandis using in sleepers production in woodmeister lt40 conversion loss is 32% and in limeate saw mill it is about 37% of conversion losses so uh, when when producing the same product conversion losses are vary in these two machineries and when we considering about some uh, common measurements showing in these two machineries the conversion losses are somewhat same but higher than in sleepers production in my experience with uh, saw milling in state timber corporation in capitola complex the conversion losses are range between 45 to 50% of average amount so if we want 1 cubic meters of sawn timber we have to convert 2 cubic meters of logs to achieve this 1 uh, cubic meter so this effort is to adopt some actions to reduce these losses in conversion and enhance the productivity by that uh, we can contribute more amount of sawn timber to a reasonable price to the local market in here i have included some import and export data of uh, timber products in sri lanka you can see we are expending uh, too much of money for the timber imports so uh, i'm trying to do some thing on uh, increase the productivity and uh, to do some extra supply to the local timber market to reduce this uh, imports from different countries so as a country it is very useful for us it is very worth for us uh, to reduce in so uh, these are some my references to do this small presentation thank you very much and i'm can i'm giving my heartiest congratulation for our bsc students to uh, their symposium thank you very much okay thank you lakmal i think uh, lakmal is uh, with us now chandra uh, uh, chandra yes uh, and uh, our uh, sir professor hiran amarasekara is also here so um, we can have a, a kind of good discussion about this kind of research and if someone want to ask question yes that uh, sir do you want to ask, ask something uh, yes sir uh, hi i am nurani uh, fourth year student from department uh, of forestry and environmental science uh, i have a question for you uh, 
what is the implication of the findings uh, if the performance are not good replace the machine with a uh, new one may cost a loss lot how to overcome this thank you yes yes dear the there is a problem with uh, machinery is also but uh, we are uh, government institute no so we cannot replace those uh, machineries or our techniques as as we wish so we have to do some uh, uh, findings but are the applications we can do to reduce these uh, kind of problems that's why i choose this uh, topic to uh, adopt some uh, measures to reduce these uh, losses in conversions uh, there is a problem with machineries also uh, but it is a it is not a simple process to just replace those machines uh, but we have to do uh, something to extract uh, more efficiency from existing machineries that's the thing i am trying to do Thank you. Iran, sir. Iran, sir, uh, is my uh, selected coordinator for this research. Also, I am not uh, your supervisor. Yes, yeah. sir. In general, sir, yeah, you no, are muted. No, so we have to start and see how it goes. Uh -huh. Yes, and sir. For the similar kind of studies we have done for the other areas, it's mainly because of uh, not the technology, but because of the bad sawmill management. That you get loss and conversion in this high, so it is interesting, and we'll see how with the results goes. No? And let me say, machine uh, when you used in different factories, different outcome. No, that is then you can check that one. Yes, yes, sir. The findings can be implemented to rectify the uh, the wrong methodology, so any kind of uh, misuse of machinery, something like that, nice. No, yes. Uh, uh, Okay, then uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Shanky. Okay, then you, uh, uh, shall we move to the next presenter? Uh, uh, one of our uh, MPL student, Mr. Banuka. So uh, he, his video is with us. Uh, so shall we play Mr. Banuka's video first and then uh, have the discussion? Hello everyone. I am going to discuss about master of, uh, my research in master of philosophy. Uh, my research topic is geochemical characterization and predicted chemical transformation of petroleum generated source rock in the offshore Mana Basin. These are my supervisors. Let's see the introduction. My research is mainly focused on Man the Mana Basin because it has a high potential for oil and gas. The proposed study based on qualitative and continuative aspect of hydrocarbon generation potential and thermal transformation of the organic matter under the experimental conditions. This research is aimed to fill the research gap of problem associated with the host rock chemistry. Let's see the objectives. General objectives. The general objectives of the uh, proposed research to investigate chemical transformation and thermal maturity process uh, prevail to be uh, on the petroleum source rock in the Mana Basin under the variable pressure and temperature conditions. Specific objectives are to identify detailed geochemical properties of the Mana Basin, to identify chemical changes under the river and experimental heat condition, to identify transformation temperature for each reaction, to define reaction rate for each chemical transformation, to model maturity of the under the subsurface sediment. Methodology. The main points of experimental designs are physical and chemical analysis of the collected sediments, stable isotopic analysis, identify the present geothermal gradient, laboratory based closed system will be prepared and collected sample will be tested in laboratory under the different temperature and pressure according to the observed geothermal gradient. The proposed analytical methods total carbon total organic carbon total nitrogen and total sulfur percentage will be determined by the element analyzer x-ray diffraction uh, 
uh, XRF and atomic absorption isotropy analysis will be incorporated to be analyzed the quality of the source rock materials. Fluorescent transformation infrared spectroscopy and nuclear resonance spectroscopy will be uh, incorporated to investigate orbiting molecule transformation during the different stages of experiment. The lipid biomarkers will be identified gas chromatography, mass spectrometer for selected sample. Finally, petroleum system modeling software will be used to identify kinetic and thermal history of the MENA basin. Expected research outcomes. The proposed study is helpful to investigate behavior of the petroleum source rock under the different pressure and temperature condition, thus useful to int interpret possible condition in the MENA basin for occurrence of the different petroleum resources under the different depth and pressure. The outcome of the research will be able to interpret possible organic compounds available in the MENA basin using oil gas reserve due to the variable physical conditions. The outcome of the research will be helpful to use for the processing of peat available in any environment on effective use. End of this project, following summarized outcomes are possible. Different organic compounds change in source stock under the variable temperature and pressure. Mobility of inorganic element during the peat transformation. Possible uh, heavier hydrocarbons like tar, tar that can be accumulated during the chemical transformation under the different pressure and temperature condition. Condition of harmful gases that can be emitted by chemical transformation. How research outcomes helpful to development of the country? Petroleum exploration is the one of the main sectors of economy development in Sri Lanka. However, up to now, there is no any non-economical outcome from exploration. This research study will help to evaluate possible combination of the generated oil and gases, which will be innovative idea on success to future petroleum exploration of the country. The chemical transformation and its modeling will support to take decision on effective exploration around the country to discover availability of the petroleum source rocks. The proposed research is highly significant on socio-economic development in the country. Thank you. Okay, thank you, uh, Mr. Banaker, uh, sharing your research uh, aims with us today. Uh, so, are there any uh, comments or suggestions for Mr. Banaker's uh, research? Banaker is uh, here, so he can answer for your burning questions if there are. Yes, Tilak, uh, this is kind of uh, the thank you for handling this session, actually. This is kind of uh, the different research that uh, the students here not exposed well. Uh, mm -hmm. It is for especially planned for the M-field research, but it is kind of different. Actually, what we are doing there is uh, kind of deep drilling, physical drilling also now going on uh, mm -hmm. around now, finish around now 190 feet down. Uh, you under the uh, special company. Uh, it is also expensive for the research around the 1 million we spent for that drilling program. Uh, then we are going to take samples from there and we are access uh, now around uh, Andigama Basin uh, around uh, uh, 70 feet to 190 feet down. There is a thick peat deposit that is the first observation in Sri Lanka in the land area such sort of thick peat deposit. Peat means organic carbon as you know everybody here. It is organic uh, organic matter. Then imagine that that peak is harder as the uh, rock uh, present that uh, during the drilling we ex exposed to like the similar condition like rock but it is peat. Uh, that means a long time before the environment uh, environmental damage is recorded there. Uh, around uh, 100 feet thickness of uh, hard peat deposit means uh, how much uh, organic matter content is there is kind of you, you can imagine how much level of uh, vegetation and the uh, the uh, the animals damage during the past this is this was happened during the uh, long period of uh, ago like around jurassic age or the uh, beyond that uh, what we are doing here, we are planning to use that peat for some sort of economic development of country, possible use of them. 
uh, with different temperature and pressure condition we are going to apply as Bhanuka mentioned. Uh, then after applying them, what sort of changes there, chemical transformation there is possible to generate gas using that peat like uh, we are observing. Uh, that is the uh, general idea. Uh, uh, because of that general idea is not uh, aware with the general people here. That is why I am explaining. Okay, thank you, Dr. Daham, for explaining and especially uh, uh, handling the matters for, I mean, arranging the, uh, as a coordinator to this uh, 25th Zilla Jubilee Symposium. So I think uh, this is a very uh, timely need research for Sri Lankan to become millionaires. At the end of uh, the research, you too become uh, in a terms millionaire. Of science, right? Yeah, in terms of science, this is kind of new observation. Uh, and also align with the national development and all those things will appear later actually. Right. Uh, at the end of the research, you two will become a millionaire, no? Or billionaire. <laughs> uh, no, it is kind of <laughs> science actually there. Uh, only thing behind there is this sort of thick peak, peak deposit that Bahana Commission in the, uh, the onshore area and those things. But that offshore area, uh, offshore, uh, the offshore area but in the, uh, the Andikam area is land area. We can see very thick feed deposit. Uh, nobody observe this. We are from forestry and environmental science subject. We are now having some uh, information regarding this feed deposit, but it should be available with the geologist at the Pera. Then we are lucky enough to uh, the, the transfer those kind of uh, the, the studies from geology department to in our department. I am very much happy. Uh, because even they are doing a lot of studies, but they, they don't recognize this kind of peat deposit there. Okay, thank uh, you, Dr. It Dan. is kind of science, in terms of science, it is good study. Anyone uh, to share your ideas or comments? Uh, if not, um, maybe uh, uh, this thing for the MSc presentations, uh, Mr. Lakmal. Uh, are you there? Yes, sir. Lak ah, Lakmar. So, oh, could you please briefly explain uh, what you are going to do with your MSc research? Uh, just simply, maybe uh, your research area and what you are going to do simply, maybe you can elaborate without using a, a PowerPoint. Is it okay to you? Uh... Yes, I can't uh, share my screen yet. Uh, uh, without uh, without the PowerPoint, uh, can you can you say something what you are going to do? Yes, uh, I think uh, Tilak they can allow him to share the screen if they like. Uh, okay, sir. Yes. Oh, then Kulanjana, could you please help us? Yes. Okay, sir. All right, we can see your screen. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. I am Lakmal from the Forest Department. At the same time, I am doing my MSc uh, in the University of Sri Jayawardenepuram. Uh, I am uh, doing my uh, research in the uh, about uh, teak uh, prediction and partition biomass and carbon of teak in Sri Lanka. So <clears throat> we have to, uh, all we know about teak, it is a very common tree, all we can identify the teak trees. It is a uh, introduced tree uh, by the Dutch in 17th century. Uh, <clears throat> so teak is having very quality timber. Uh, it is uh, very easy to work. And it is it have uh, it having a, uh, high durability and the uh, strength, so that's why the it's come uh, very uh, high quality timber as well as the <coughs> teak timber have high demand as a high value. So at the same time, uh, teak tree have very uh, comparatively high growth rate compare with the uh, endemic trees, compare with the natives, compare with the introduced ones. Among those, uh, teak have a uh, high uh, growth rate. Uh, 
So uh, the use of tea is, uh, all we know, it is very good timber for the furniture as well as the housing projects. So <clears throat> when we come to the biomass, uh, it's simply we can identify by uh, uh, organic material that made from the plant and animals, uh, it can call biomass. Uh, it is a cycle. Uh, the atmospheric carbon dioxide picks in by the trees, then it goes to the uh, organic material in the trees, then burn it out and come to the, come again to the atmospheric is a simple cycle. So uh, human, uh, uh, according to the human activities, this cycle also going to broken as, and also to the, uh, it is in now in its very unbalanced situation. So, uh, so all we know carbon dioxide is uh, green gas, uh, greenhouse gas. So because of this uh, increasing uh, carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, it is make uh, bad effect to the environment. So uh, <coughs> uh, considering how atmospheric carbon dioxide uh, level in the Earth, uh, it is rapidly uh, increased after the industrial revolution. The, after the late 90s to now, it is uh, rapidly increasing. It's day by day. So now we are in the burning environmental or the burning uh, world. So we are suffering from the global warming because of the carbon dioxide increasing as well as other reasons. So uh, <coughs> uh, 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 because of this global warming, we can see sea level rise, temperature rising and uh, warming oceans, declaring Arctic sea ice and ocean acidification, uh, snow cover losing, decreasing, Many more things can uh, happening in the world because of this global warming <coughs> increasing. So, so it, with the global warming, now new term come to the vocabulary. It's called green economy. As a scientist and the uh, economic uh, sector. They identified there is some uh, gap, some problem with the economy and the problem with the uh, entire world. So they moved to the green economy. Green economy mean by its uh, economic activities with mainly focus with the less emission. So or the reducing uh, reducing emission. Uh, hereafter, we can uh, identify some. Uh, areas of the uh, green economy, so we can identify as a uh, low carbon emission, uh, green jobs, reforestation, equity. So as a foresters, we can mainly uh, engage with the reforestation. Uh, then, <clears throat> so then again, come to the tea. Uh, uh, in previously, I mentioned uh, tea is have comparatively high growth rate because of that uh, because of that teak having high carbon fixing rate at the same time uh, uh, take uh, teak having high timber value so because of that uh, high timber value the consumers of the tea uh, they would like to remain their Furniture or the building materials are the as it is. So that's mean we can stock or the we can fix the carbon intake as a uh, for the uh, long time. There may be 50, 25, 50 or the maybe 
to the 100 years. So uh, we again uh, talking about good growth rate. This is uh, this uh, two pictures are taken in the same plantation. This plantation is the, is in uh, Onragal area. Uh, this was uh, established in uh, late 2019. The press photograph. Uh, this one is taken in uh, to uh, March of 2020, and this is uh, other one is taken from today morning. So uh, it's uh, maybe it's there are uh, ten month period. So we can uh, uh, identify or the, we can have some idea about the growth rate of the peak uh, using these uh, two photographs. Then uh, <clears throat> when uh, when we are studying about biomass, uh, we can we know or the we can assume mainly uh, above ground. Uh, mean uh, above ground biomass maybe it's around uh, seventy five or the eighty eighty uh, percent. Uh, as well as the same time uh, biomass in the below ground, it's maybe around. Uh, 25 or the uh, uh, 20 percent so <clears throat> in my study uh, my sites maybe i select uh uh kurunagal and monoragal areas uh, so basically i to uh, hope to do this study in uh, forest department uh, plantations under forest department. <clears throat> so this is some uh, pictures about, about pictures uh, about peak plantation. This is established. Uh, this is Monragala area plantation. This is established in uh, 2000, late 2019, and also this one is. Uh, establishing late 2018 and this another big plantation so uh, <clears throat> in my uh, study uh, i uh, would like to study the carbon uh, fixing or the biomass in the uh, <clears throat> uh, age classes it's uh, age classes in age 6 13 20 30 and 40. Uh, so reason for the uh, age classes, uh, we know in forest department, uh, we are practicing thinning series. So uh, PCT, CTs, and finally RCT. So we are doing our uh, first or the thinning or the it's called pre-commercial thinning at the age of age six. Uh, <clears throat> Then come CTs respectively. We uh, finally we do the uh, RCT. RCT that means uh, regenerational cutting. Uh, <clears throat> uh, here I would uh, I supposed to select three plantation from uh, three plantation managed by the forest department from each region. Uh, on Radhapura, Kurunagal, and Munragala for above age, cla uh, for above age classes. Uh, then select 30, ra 30, randomly select 30 trees per each age class from above mentioned site. That means uh, it's around 150, 150 trees from each site. Uh, altogether, maybe it's maybe uh, more than 500, uh, 450 uh, trees. So <clears throat> mainly uh, measurements are diameter and height. Uh, <clears throat> after that, uh, uh, we uh, focus about the uh, biomass calculation or the finding about biomass under underground biomass. So so that we have to uproot uh, three trees uh, from each age class set each region at, at the thinning uh, at the thinning and the final harvest uh, time. Uh, this method is uh, simply uprooting trees 
we are trying partition uh, and weaving and on right then goes to the calculation part mm -hmm. so <clears throat> measures uh, biomass uh, respectively for the main stem uh, branches of the then foliages as well as the roots uh, then uh, uh, estimate for the carbon for the each of above then can calculate total amount of carbon dioxide fixed in the tree after the doing this uh, research research uh, in my <coughs> research my expected outcomes are uh, model biomass and carbon with diameter and uh, height so that biomass and carbon can be uh, predict at any age and then uh, other one is uh, identify the proportion of biomass and carbon partition and uh, in each three component stem root and branches <coughs> so significance of the the result is uh, we can logically present ecological consideration of tea cultivation then we can uh, logically present ecological services that can have from the tea so in this area or the tea plantation area rural people so the local community they believe the tea is consume lot a lot of uh, water or the it may hay has to uh, start fire in the uh, forest uh, areas so likewise uh, the some in the local community they have some uh, bad mind on the tea plantation so we can after this uh, research we can uh, logically present them to uh, value of the about the political value of the uh, tea then uh, construction may be arise it's maybe uprooting is a uh, constraint and extraction of pine roots is very difficult and also we know many of elephants are in the dry zone they are located around the uh, peak plantation it will be the constraints and then uh, thank you very much uh, for you the great attention for me okay thank you lakmal uh, so we can uh, start our discussion uh, uh, on uh, lakmal's uh, research uh, uh, views or, or research plan. Are there any questions or comments? Sir, I have a question. Hi, uh, I'm Dilini from uh, third year uh, special batch. Uh, my question is, uh, are you going to measure the biomass and uh, carbon at the maturity of teak? If so, what is the age considered for that? Uh, Age is uh, we are going to uh, measure biomass in the uh, at the thinning stages that mean uh, age uh, age uh, six plantation at age six uh, 30, 20, 30, and forty. Okay, thank you. So, so your plan is to measure the biomass and the carbon uh, with the thinning. Classes, no thinning, thinning, and, uh, thinning operation, and at the end of the maturity, yes, uh, forty years. I I noticed that forty years the maturity. Uh, yes, uh, mainly in Sri Lanka, uh, in forest department they manage uh, their teak plantation till uh, around forty years. It sometimes some places it may be uh, going down. That's mean. Anyhow, it's uh, around 30 to 48. Right. Uh, so as we understood, so you are going to measure or you are going to give a kind of ecological answers uh, for some uh, controversial uh, things. I mean, especially as you highlighted by the local people. So they are criticizing uh, uh, the tea plantation, isn't it? So yes. you want to find the answers by uh, doing this research. Um, are there any concerns uh, on uh, Lakmal's uh, research idea? If not, uh, 
maybe thank uh, yes uh, thank you lakmal for presenting uh, yes, sir. thank you very much sir give me opportunity to present uh, and this kind of a uh, uh, value forum and thank you very much okay I think uh, the credit should go to Professor Hirana Varasekar who uh, who uh, suggest this uh, forum uh, with this uh, 25th uh, International Forest and Environment Symposium. So now we are at the end of uh, this uh, session. So we discussed uh, some uh, research findings from our MSc students as well as uh, research ideas or research plans for the uh, present MSc students. Uh, I think uh, this uh, helped uh, our students, at least uh, with this pandemic, where we, you could not uh, uh, meet each other uh, physically, but uh, this platform provides you to, uh, to share, share your idea. Uh, so, at, uh, Dr. Varini and Dr. Chamila, do you want to add something to conclude this session? Yes, Dr. Tilak. I think uh, one of the things... Uh, that uh, we have seen is that uh, all these MSc students and MPL students, uh, some of them actually they are working in industry and related, some are working, doing all this ground level work. Uh, so I think that's an important thing uh, since uh, as being academics, we can provide them the knowledge and um, skills, but also they can gain much more information and details on what's happening uh, in the industry. And also, I think they can get uh, valuable information from them. From them, so I think uh, it's a very good forum for the uh, BSc students and future uh, MSc yes. uh, students who want to do fellow MSc in this uh, uh, this sort of areas to see what yes. uh, what is happening and everything. So I think it has been a successful forum. Um, so thank you very much. Uh, yes, uh, he answer and. Um, Dr. Tila for conducting this and Dr. Dahan for coordinating uh, the uh, symposium. Dr. Kamila, uh, you want to add something? Yeah. Uh, first of all, I must say because, because of this uh, pandemic situation, our students, uh, they cannot meet uh, each other. So because of that, uh, this uh, session is very important. So uh, the credit should go to the uh, to Hiran's uh, actually he planned this session um, and as one of our students mentioned there uh, we can um, let BSc students to work with our MSc students and PhD students and we can uh, generate the link between oh. all these uh, student groups so they should work together oh. yeah I can remember when I was a, a BSc student, I helped uh, for conducting field works for MSc students. So that's so, culture we can uh, continue. So, uh, okay, sorry, Dr. Chamila for disturbing, but uh, now uh, we are uh, very close to concluding uh, our con concluding session for the symposium. So with this, uh, uh, shall we wind up the session? Uh, yeah, thank you very much for all the presenters and the attenders. Uh, especially, we noticed that uh, Dr. Priyan, uh, Dr. Sampatwa Hala, Professor Hiran, uh, and uh, Professor Prashanti Gunavardhan also joined with us for this uh, for session. So, thank you very much for your contribution. And I think uh, this uh, the for this uh, session would help to inculcate good research culture among our students. So, so then thank you very much uh, for the uh, Kulanchanayan uh, team uh, supported from the university end. So, you, Senori. so this is the end of the session. I would like to thank Dr. Tilak Chandra Tilika, Dr. Varani Chayasuriya, Dr. Chamila Patirana for this informative session and to the, all the participants. Also would like to thank the organizing committee for this, uh, for arranging this session. And thank you all for being with 25th International and Forestry and Environment Symposium 2020. Before winding up, I kindly request you all to turn on the camera to take a photograph. <laughs>
Okay, another one with your thumbs up. Okay, thank you all. I wish you all a prosperous 2021. Thank you. Have a good day.